Go ahead and be seated, please. Thank you, Caleb, for leading our song worship today. If you would, go ahead and turn to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Good morning, Zoom. You know, I was thinking today, I don't know if we call you Zoomers or Zoombies, kind of like zombies or something like that. But anyway, just, just I mean, I, the things that preachers think, I don't know. But anyway, we, we love seeing you on, on Zoom and, and then also those that later uh, will be um, on YouTube watching. Most of you know that um, I, I, I just speak the truth. You know, if something is on my mind or whatever, uh, and I take seriously what I do. I take seriously the, this portion of, of our gathering uh, where we get into uh, the Word of God. Ooh, did you come up with the slide? Who came up with the slide? Aaron? Wow, like that. Um, because I really, I really struggled with, with my sermon today. Um, really, for about two weeks, I've kind of been thinking. This last week, uh, Sherry kept probably wondering, why is he holed up in his office? And I don't think a really fancy office or anything like that. I've got some easy chairs in there. Uh, with some plants and a window and stuff like that that I can see out of. But uh, I just spent a lot of time, and even this morning, uh, on my walk, I get up and I walk in the mornings, and, uh, and so I was praying about this, thinking about what I wanted to say today, and, uh, and so I, I kind of settled on three passages that we're going to be looking at today. You know, tomorrow uh, we're going to be celebrating uh, the birth of our nation. Um, freedom uh, is kind of the, the, the thing uh, with tomorrow. And I was just, I've been really, I've really been thinking about this a lot this week that, uh, you know, tomorrow we're going to be shooting fireworks. Um, we're going to be going to fireworks shows. Uh, we're going to be pulling out the grill and, and grilling. Um, maybe even cranking some homemade ice cream. Um, you know, all sorts of things. But when Tuesday morning rolls around, how many people are going to feel like, you know what, man, I've got freedom. Matter of fact, even tomorrow, while many people are celebrating uh, the 4th of July and freedom, what about those that are incarcerated? You think they're feeling this tremendous freedom? What about those that are in drug addiction centers? What about those that are in stress wards and units at hospitals? What about children that have been separated from their parents because of abuse and they're afraid? Even before moving here to Peoria, I was very involved with the women's abuse shelter uh, just south of St. Louis. And I can remember the first time that I went to go there, I didn't even know where it was, and so I called the front desk at, at this facility and asked them and said, I want to come out. I'm, I'm needing to see a particular uh, lady that we were trying to help her to purchase a car. And, uh, and they told me, uh, sorry, we don't know who you are. We're not giving out that address. And, and, and the whole thing is, I mean, there's so much fear in the, in, in the lives of these women because of the abuse that they have sustained from, from boyfriends, from husbands, or, or whomever. And, I, you know, I was just thinking about all of this. And, and even us today thinking about, you know, the, 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 trying to pay our bills, uh, trying to buy groceries, trying to put fuel in our vehicles. Um, how many of us really feel freedom? 
And here's the thing, church. Freedom is not going to come from a country. Freedom's not going to come from a government. Freedom's not going to come from military action. True freedom, authentic freedom, can only come from Jesus Christ. Because even if on the outside there's some things that we can have the freedom for and freedom to do, what about here? What about in the mind? Where so many times there are so many of us, even today, sitting in this room and on Zoom, so many of the time, you know, I mean, we, we, are, we feel like that, that, we're, that we're captives, that we don't have this freedom. We don't feel peace in our lives. We don't feel peace in our minds. And that's why Jesus said, and I wanted to start with John chapter 14, verse 27, where Jesus says this, Jesus says to his followers, and when Jesus speaks these words, there is, his disciples, they're under so much distress. They're under so much fear, anxiety. Because Jesus is telling them, you know what? Man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be leaving you. And, and they're trying to get their brains around, well, what, what does that mean, Jesus? And how can we do life without you? What, do you? what are you even talking about? And that's why, as he starts chapter 14, he tells them, do not let your hearts be troubled. And these words are for us today. No matter who you are, no matter what circumstance you're facing, and what situation that you find yourself in today, and whatever it is that you feel like is holding you captive today, Jesus is speaking to you. He's speaking to me. He's speaking to all of us. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust in me. And so when he gets to verse 27, listen to what Jesus says. He says, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Today, Jesus is wanting to give all of us a gift. It's a gift that we cannot receive anywhere else. We can try as we might, trying to find this peace of mind, this peace in our heart, and we search after it all over the place. But Jesus is standing before us today, church, saying, I want to give you a gift. I want to give you peace. And the peace that he's talking about, and I believe it was in one of our Bible uh, devotionals that, that Dean and Meta have set up for us that several of us are participating in. But the word peace there is the word shalom. And we've talked about this this past year. The peace that Jesus is offering us is not based on, on our circumstances. It's not based on whatever situation we may find ourselves in. The peace that Jesus offers us and gives us is not based on a thing. It's based on a person. Shalom is Jesus. Peace is a person. And the only place that we can find security, the only place that we can find Strength, the only place that we can find this peace is in Jesus Christ. And so he tells us, you don't have to be troubled. You don't have to be afraid. Flip over to Romans chapter 8. In chapter 8, verse 1, 
the, the, the church at Rome, they were trying to base their salvation. Some of them, the Jews, were trying to base their salvation on their heritage. Well, we're God's chosen people. And if you read the book of Romans, you'll see right off the bat, I mean, there's this little sparring thing going on between the Jewish Christians and the Gentile Christians because the Jewish Christians, they're looking down on the Gentile Christians. They go, you know what? We're God's chosen people. You're not. You're not really right with God because you don't have the right blood flowing through your veins. But then they turned around, and then the Gentile Christians, they, they started judging the, 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 the Jewish Christians. And so Paul, through the Holy Spirit, he says, So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Jesus Christ. And because you belong to Him, the power of the life-given Spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. So for us sitting in this room today and on Zoom today, if we're believers in Jesus Christ and followers of Jesus, it's not based on where we go to church. It's not based on, on uh, how many times we've taken the Lord's Supper. It's not based on how much money we've given. It's not based on how much our attendance and, and check marks we get. It's based on Jesus. There's no condemnation. There is no judgment on those who belong to Jesus Christ. And the Spirit, the Spirit frees us from the power of sin that leads to death. Do you feel that power today in your life? Do I feel the power of the Spirit in me? And so when you look at verse 6, he says, So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. And I like the way the NIV reads this, and I wrote it down on a piece of paper in my Bible. The mind governed by the flesh is death. But the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. We're so prone to be governed by our emotions, by our feelings. Somebody does something wrong to me, and they try to hurt me. I have emotions that begin to well up inside of me, and my feelings begin to well up inside of me. And then I begin to want to take revenge on them or retaliate in some kind of way. Or I start speaking some words to them and, and putting them down. And, and I don't sound like Jesus at all. But by Jimmy, I told them. Only a few hours later when I get back home, I begin to think, man, what an idiot you sounded like. But we're prone to let our feelings and emotions govern our minds. And when, they, when it governs our minds, that's what comes out of our life. Pride. Pride. You think about pride, how much pride begins to govern our minds, governs our thoughts, and governs our actions. It's about me. You're not going to rain on my parade. I'm bigger than you. And again, pride gets in the way of how we treat people. God in this passage is calling us to so much more. 
God is calling us to something so much deeper than being governed by our sinful nature. God is calling us to the supernatural. I can remember the first time I started using that word years ago. I mean, I never heard that word used from the pulpit when I was growing up. And I kept looking at Scripture and, 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 and thinking about it. And you know, that's exactly what God is calling us to. He's calling us to the supernatural. Supernatural just simply means above nature. It's not in our nature to be like God. But that's what He's calling us to. But it's through the Holy Spirit. It's being governed by the Holy Spirit. We have God in us. The Holy Spirit has taken up residence in you, in your heart, in your mind, in your life. And He's telling us when we're governed by the Holy Spirit, we have peace. We have life. You remember, oh, I don't know, it's a few weeks ago, we were talking about 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, talking about the Holy Spirit, that, 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 uh, that God did not give us a spirit of fear and timidity, but God has given us a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. You remember as we talked about that scripture? Because if I have a spirit of fear, if I have a spirit of, of anxiousness, if I have a spirit of, 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 of stress and anxiety, if I have that spirit, I need to understand that spirit is not from God. Because Scripture very plainly says, God did not give us a spirit of fear and timidity. The spirit God has given us, church, is a spirit of power, of love, self-discipline. So let me ask you a question. How can we begin to have a mind that is governed by the Holy Spirit? What are your mornings like when you go to get up? What happens when that alarm clock goes off? I would ask for a show of hands, but not going to do it. But how many of you hit the? How many of you hit the uh, the snooze? Christina, whoop! I see heads nodding. Okay, no hands up, but I see heads nodding. How many of you hit the snooze more than once? So then, what happens? All of a sudden, it's like, oh, I need to get up. How many of you, before you ever get out of bed, you wake up and you're lying there and you're thinking in your mind of all the stuff that you need to do today? That particular day. Here's all the stuff i got to do. Man, I've got this schedule. Uh, I've got things at work. And, 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 and I've got to take care of all of this. Or, or I've got to take the car to the, to the mechanic. And, and I've got to take uh, uh, little Johnny. You know, he needs to go to the dentist. And, and I've got all of these things to do. How, how many of you sometimes before you ever get out of bed, you're already at 4 p.m. that day? I've been there. So then I jump out of bed, and here I go. So old saying used to go, y'all probably know what PF flowers are a bit. Nita, you remember PF flowers? You know, we used to say, yeah, I put on my PF flyers, boom, because I got a book. What if, 
What if you allow the Holy Spirit who is power, love, and self-discipline? What if you allow the Holy Spirit to cause your self-discipline to say, you know what? I'm going to set the alarm clock, not later. I'm going to set it 30 minutes earlier because I want to spend time with God. I need to spend time with God. I'm tired of getting up and, and running like a chicken with my head cut off through my day. Becoming completely exhausted and frustrated. And because of my frustration and my exhaustion of, of, of trying to do things on my own and take care of everything on my own, man, I have no peace in my, in my heart, no peace in my life. And I explode on others. because they're in my way or they're moving too slow or I just can't deal with it and I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. And let me ask you a question though. How important is it for us to have a mind governed by the Holy Spirit? He says very plainly in, in Romans 8, 6, if we have a mind that is governed by the sinful nature, me doing me, me doing what I want to do. Me dealing with people the way that I want to deal with people. He says that leads to death. That leads to decay. It leads to separation from God. What happens if you continue down that track? What if you continue down the track of, of you doing you, you saying whatever you want to say to whomever, and man, if somebody gets in my way, I am going to give them a piece of my mind, and man, you know what? Nobody's going to rain on my parade. You ever been down that track? I have. And it's not very long before, you know what? You know what death means? Death really means separation. And, and when, when you think about our relationship with, with Jesus and our relationship with the Father and the Holy Spirit, what begins to happen is I separate myself from God. I don't read my Bible. I don't pray. Oh, yeah, I'll go to church and punch my time card. But I don't have life. I have separation from God that leads to death. Death here in this life, but also death for, separated from God for all eternity. You see, what we're talking about today is very critical, it's very important. And it's important because of our salvation. Our deliverance, our freedom that Jesus gives us is not based on church. It's not based on how many times we're here, as we were talking about this morning, Terry, how we're dressed. Are we going to keep our heritage and do things the way that we've always done it? My salvation is not based on any of that. Neither is yours. Our salvation is based on whether or not we are allowing the Holy Spirit to govern our minds as we go through our days. And when the Holy Spirit governs our mind, when the Holy Spirit is controlling our thinking... Whatever controls your thinking is going to control your actions. Man, whatever you're thinking eventually is going to come out. Have you been around somebody that, man, they just blurt something out and they go, whoa, wow, I don't know where that came from. Well, I can tell you where it came from. You've been thinking it. 
And eventually it's going to come out. But true freedom comes whenever we, whenever we have a mind that is governed by the Spirit. That's where we get life. That's where we get peace. Shalom. And so going back to, to how do you get up out of your bed when you start in the morning? If we start, man, just, just rushing, trying to get things done and run out the door and we're grabbing things even as we're running out the door and jumping the vehicle to get to work. I'm going to dare say that more than likely you don't have a mind that's being controlled by the Spirit because you ain't had time to even think about it. And th there was a friend of mine down at the IGA store in DeSoto, uh, a lady that, that, that worked down there. She was a divorcee. She had two kids in high school. She was working three jobs just to make ends meet. And got to be really good friends with her and, and friends with all of them in that store. I'd go down there every day and kind of hang out. <laughs> but... I asked her one day, I go, wow, how do, you, how, do you, how do you keep your sanity? And she goes, my kids get up at 6.30 in the morning to get ready for school, but I get up at 6 before they get up just to spend time with God. Three jobs. Get up a half hour earlier because I have got to spend time in the Word with God. I've got to spend time in prayer. I've got to spend time just, just, just getting my mind right. Letting the, letting the Holy Spirit fill me. I told you about whenever I went to work at WorldCom, and I think it was 2001. I wanted to know if I was the real deal as a preacher. Am I just reading my Bible because I'm a preacher? Am I just uh, uh, praying every day and praying for people because I'm a preacher? Am I doing the things I'm doing just because I'm a preacher? And I was leaving the church after being there for 15 years. And so I thought, here's a good chance because I want to see, man, David, are you the real deal? And so I went to work at WorldCom, which at that time was the second largest telecommunications company in the world behind AT&T. And I'm just going to put it to you plain. I mean, it was a very toxic environment for a believer. But I took the job because I thought, you know what, man, if you could ever be light, here's the place to be light. And I'm going to find out if I'm the real deal. We would leave the house at 5.30 a.m. We had about an hour drive to West County, St. Louis, so, I, you know, we, I get, we leave, there were about four of us from that area pretty close to each other, so we, we would carpool, and, and we would leave at 5.30 in the morning. I got up at 4.30 every morning. Because I needed to spend time with God. I'd make a cup of coffee, I think at that time I was just eating Pop-Tart. So I'd eat my Pop-Tart, drink my coffee, and then I'd spend the next 30, the, the 35 minutes just reading the Bible, just talking to God, just trying to prepare my mind for what was ahead of me that day. Because I knew that without God, I was going to sink. I was going to die spiritually. even driving the school bus. Just finished five years, retired from that. We had to be at the school at about, mm, about 6.40 a.m. I had to be ready to, to drive my bus out of the parking lot at about 7 a.m. So I didn't have to leave the house till about 6.30. I got up at 5 a.m. every morning. I cook my breakfast. I'd eat an egg, a piece of toast with fig preserves on it, being from the south. My fruit. 
But then I would spend about 30 minutes just reading the Bible that had nothing to do with sermons or anything else, just reading the Bible, praying. Because I'm sure Gary can relate to this. It could be pretty toxic sometimes on the bus. The language doesn't sound like church language for sure, if you get my drift. But I felt like that, that God had put me there for a reason, to be light. And so I felt like in my life that I needed to have the self-discipline. That if I am serious, if Jesus is serious, here you go, Terry, if Jesus is serious in what he is saying here, and if I am serious that I want the Spirit to, to govern my mind, because whatever governs my mind, that's going to be what comes out of my life. Then I'm going to do whatever is necessary to be sure that my day starts with a mind filled with the Holy Spirit. Because it's so easy for the sinful nature to take charge. So let's get ready for the Lord's Supper. Because it's what Jesus did on that cross that has brought us peace, that has given us life. And Jesus has given us His Holy Spirit that's what John 14 really is all about, giving us His Holy Spirit to live in us so that we can have life and so that we can have peace, so that we have freedom. So Jesus, I just want to say thank you for giving your life for us. I'm so thankful, Jesus, that you have given us a very visible and a very tangible way in which to remember what you did for each one of us on that cross. We honor you today. And Lord, we pray today that your Holy Spirit fills us with your presence. And as you get ready for the fruit of the vine, Jesus, just thank you so much for the blood that you gave for us. We hear the saying all the time that freedom isn't cheap. Grace isn't cheap. You, you had no sin. But yet you died and became our sin. So that when we stand before our Father, there is no condemnation for those of us who are in you. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus, for your blood. And Lord, I just want to say thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit who is in us and who is always shaping our character, shaping our hearts. Today, Lord, I pray that we will all be intentional by trusting you and by allowing your Spirit to govern our minds and to govern our actions. Lord, today we surrender our thoughts to you Surrender them to you, Jesus, that, that you'll nail the, our thoughts to that cross. So that we 
will have a life that revolves completely around you. Thank you, Jesus. And it's in your name we pray. Amen.